2022 was an absolutely amazing year for EV sales here in the US. They've quickly gone from the quirky curiosity of early adopters to ready for mass market adoption. And if we're talking about car sales here in the US for EVs, Tesla is king with over 65% market share. So what exactly makes the Tesla Model Y so good? And what's it actually like to drive and to own? And can you actually fit in the third row? This is the Tesla Model Y, and this is the Fully Charged Show. We know you love the Fully Charged Show. So why not come to one of our global live shows in 2023 and 2024? The next shows are in the UK, specifically Farnborough and Harrogate. Get your tickets today. All right, straight talk. Full-size adults aren't really gonna fit back here. My head touches the glass. And as you can tell here, even with the seat moved all the way forward, I just don't have enough room. But that's not really the point of this car. If you have a family of seven and you need a seven passenger SUV, this is not the car for you. You're probably still gonna be better off with like a Rivian R1S or a bigger full-size SUV. But if you have children, and you just need to have the occasional access to the rear seats when family comes into town, well then that's exactly what this car is made for. Children will fit back there very comfortably. There's room for car seats and everything else. And we'll get back to that here more in a little bit. Out front, you have a very familiar front end, the same headlight design as the Model 3, and the same arrow that you've come to know and love. You got cut out to bring the air up and over the wheels, making this a pretty svelte car with a really good drag coefficient. Really, the looks are probably not the reason why you're buying this car. The design is fine, it's good. It doesn't really shatter any barriers or break any design patterns or win any awards, but overall, a good looking EV, but that's really not the full story. To really understand why this car sells as well as it does, we gotta get in and take it for a drive. When it comes to software, this is where I think the Tesla is by far the car you want, the Model Y in particular, because their software is so good. The responsiveness of the maps and all the menus are top notch. So now let's talk about the driving dynamics. Now this car is a little more plush, a little more compliant than the Model 3. The Model 3 is definitely pretty stiff and on the sportier side. Now the Model Y is still sporty. I think this is a sportier ride. There's less body roll, it's a little bit stiffer than competitors like the iV4. Also you have controls for how much feedback and how much assist you want in the steering and it really makes a huge difference. I'm a sports enthusiast, I like sports sedans, so I have it on the sport mode and the steering wheel is really responsive. There's a healthy level of feedback and jitter from the road. Of course, it is a electronically assisted system, so you're not gonna get a ton of feedback, but there's no play, it's very tight, and the steering feel is fantastic. It's very confidence inspiring. Being electric, I'm going 58 miles an hour. Full throttle, I'm going 80 miles an hour. <laughs> this car is wildly faster than any model of any other midsize crossover SUV on the market. The next thing, let's talk about the cargo capacity and if this sloping roof design really is much of a problem. With me, I have got a whole accoutrement of various things that I've been packing and unpacking recently. I have a carry-on travel bag, kind of a medium-sized bag, a full-size airline bag, and a bunch of car seats and strollers and stuff. And I wanna show you just how capable this actually is. And to help me demonstrate, I have my son. Remy, say hi. Hi. Let's start with the frunk. Now this is a carry-on bag for an airline. Uh, opening the frunk, by the way, in app or on screen, there's no button up here. A little odd, but not a big deal. You can't open that from anywhere in the world, which is kind of cool. But now this frunk is a little bit smaller because this has the biodefense hazard system, the really complicated HVAC. But because it's the Y and it's a little bit taller, I can fit one of these bags in here just fine. I'll put it this way. There's still a little bit of room for backpacks and stuff. This might look like the floor, but it's actually not because there's no gas tank or spare tire, which is good or bad depending on how you look at it. There's a massive cavernous area down here, and this actually kind of lifts up, which is actually big enough for the larger, but not the biggest, size of airline luggage. 
Now the tires, the wheels on this thing are kind of hidden, so it doesn't close, but I mean, most of that is down there. And if we remove this and just put it on the inside, you've got a fair bit of room for other stuff like the big airline luggage and maybe a stroller. Right, Remy, what do you got there? And here we go. So it's a little bit of a tight fit, but that is all three airline luggage, a stroller and a Remington. Being in the Model Y as opposed to a Model 3, you have just a cavernous amount of headroom. Jack would appreciate this being six foot five, but the glass combined with the higher roof line just makes for a really expansive feeling cockpit. And that glass wraps all the way around. The front has really got good visibility. Now one drawback of the car is the rear visibility is not great. That rear glass is tiny. It's raked at a very high angle. And so looking through the back is a little challenging to be honest. But of course you can always just pull up the cameras. And again, a new software update, you can see both sides and the rear at the same time. And the integration with their mobile app and everything else, again, is just world class. This car has keyless entry with a card or with your phone, and it just works, and it works flawlessly all the time. If you wanna give your friends access, you can send them a code, they can download the app, and they can drive your car. You can make it expire when you're done with it. You can have the profile linked to your phone. So my wife drives my car, we, I drive my car, Juan drives his car, but whosoever phone is used to unlock the car, it knows who that person is, moves the seats, moves the cameras, moves the mirrors, sets the car up for that user, and even remembers things like your HVAC system, where your heating and cooling settings were, and recalls all of it. It's just a delight, and it's one of those things you don't notice. You'll never think about it when you drive this car until you drive a car that doesn't have those features. All right, now let's do a little fit check. Remy, you good? Yeah. Here we go. Okay, his little legs got room, yes, okay. How about me? Okay, I am six feet tall. I've got three inches over my head and I actually have a couple inches in front of me as well. Let's sit in front of myself and um, Jack could fit in either of those rows, honestly. So this is, yeah, in terms of spacing and stuff, as long as the person in the very back is a Remington-sized individual, I think you're gonna be fine. If I was gonna tell my mom and dad to get an EV, the reason why I've always leaned towards Tesla is it just makes everything easy. You don't have to be uh, a 1920s aviator with a map out trying to figure out the best route, where to go. You don't have to call ahead or check different apps to see which chargers are available or which ones aren't. You get a Tesla, all of that stuff just works. Now, just as I was talking about how great their software is, I don't know if you can see this, but the windshield wipers keep coming on with the <laughs> lane keep. It is a clear blue sky day and my windshield wipers are on. This is one of those quirky things. I think I might have to just pull over and do a software restart. What is going on? I've never seen this before. I'm gonna pull over and see if I can restart the computer and, and see if that goes away. Has it ever happened to you? No, right? Damn. See the screen just turned black. Restarting the computer, which is not the drive computer, that's a different computer, is as easy as just pushing these two buttons down. Now, in my Model 3, I've probably done a restart every year, so maybe three or four restarts over three or four years. And in this car, this is the first time I've had to do it. Let's see if that takes care of my auto steer problem. One thing to note is if anything goes wrong with your screen, you can't see anything. You don't know how fast you're going, you don't have directions, you don't have anything. You're, you're shooting in the dark. Okay, the computer's back online from the restart. Let's see if that weird windshield wiper bug is gone. Look at that. Okay, I have never seen that one before. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but it is odd. I've, I couldn't tell you why that was happening, but it's fine now. Now look, I understand this is kind of a head over heart situation. This car is not gorgeous. There are better looking EVs out there. They're more exciting. 
more new or cool, but Tesla's and the Tesla Model Y in particular is just quietly brilliant. It doesn't jump off the page. There's a bajillion of them, just look around, but it does everything so well. And I think a couple of years from now, it'll age well. Their battery packs and their battery management systems are top of the line. Their charging infrastructure will keep up and keep pace, and their software will continue to delight you with future updates and cool new features you haven't even dreamt of yet. That is a look at the Tesla Model Y. Thank you so much for watching. If you have comments or questions, sound off in the comments below. And if you have been, thank you so much for watching.